What's happening, my friends? We're doing ninja stuff today. We're incorporating guns, blades, and martial arts because let's face it, that's how many violent encounters go. Up close, personal, and you don't know what's coming, so we need some of that ninja stuff. You're learning ninja stuff today. I've got two major goals. One is in our training. I don't want to get stuck in the jugular with a blade, so that's uh, that's goal number one. Number two is to convey cool ninja stuff to you. I'm joined with a dude named Amir. He's got four different black belts, uh, LE background, training background, all kinds of stuff to make you guys his Padawan learner as he beats up on me. It's going to be a great video. You need it. You love it. Let's do it. Sliding in again. These hands are mine this time. My magnetic box, the splinter. What kind of splinter? It's a knife. We're back with another knife. Warrior Poets Society. We've merged with Alex Steele, Evan Temple, Will Stelter, John Lovell. Crafted the finest blade this side of the Mississippi. It's bad little blade. It'll get into places you need it to. Why? Because we got tricks, baby. Quick draw McGraw. These bad boys are going to go quick. You better grab some. Oh, wait, what am I talking about? I better snag my own. See you there. WordPotSociety.com. All right, folks, as promised, this is Amir. Amir, you got a bunch of black belts. What do you got? Taekwondo, Hapkido, Jiu Jitsu, and Tang Soo Do. That's awesome. Uh, respect to three, Taekwondo count? What do you think? It did back in the day. It did back in the day when it was a knockout sport. Now it's more fencing with your lead leg. Awesome, so he's a bad news dude. Just to let you know that your host is not outmatched. I've seen the Karate Kid seven times. And so you guys all know if we went just no holds barred, I think I'd hold my own because of Daniel Sun, right? You seem oh, un yeah. you yeah. seem unconvinced. No, bro. no, no, no. Ow. You're embarrassing me Ow. in front of my friends. Ow. Yeah, Not, no, I'm sorry. All right, so we're talking blades, guns, and martial arts today. And the big thing you wanted to teach everyone today was we're, we're working on weapon retention predominantly with the blade. How to defend our gun with a blade. Awesome. So before we jump into the cool, sexy stuff, I want to talk about just equipment as quickly as we can. Uh, so that we can move on. Right now I've got live blades on me and when we start doing force on force, everything's gonna be rendered inert and we'll be real safe. I've already converted my gun over to a not gun anymore. It doesn't have a slide, therefore it is no longer a firearm. If you put in the comments, it still is a gun because that is a serial number at you. I'll find a way to throw something at you through the camera and knock you out at your computer screen or phone screen for being a nerd. So uh, what do you carry blade wise? I carry the splinter knife. So you have one there. This is it. I love it. It's low vis, easily concealed, but yet still effective. Awesome. Okay, so I have not been carrying this. Uh, we designed them, we love them, but I haven't really had a, a use. Typically when I'm carrying like my everyday carry, I'll have my gun and a clinch pick. And if I don't have my clinch pick, I'll at least have something like this guy. This is the Fox folder. Uh, and I, I went through a phase where I was carrying that flip out karambit mm. and I didn't really know how to use it very well. So we did some videos on that. Uh, but I really just felt like a ninja when it came out real cool. But I really do like this. This is my favorite. That's the awesome thing about the splinter and the fox folder. If you know how to punch, you can deploy it. Karambit takes a little bit more training to get used to. Uh, now, when it comes to war belt, I've been carrying the Shivworks push dagger on my belt and uh, it's going back here, but that's what I've been doing up until now. So this is put here for the first time today, as per you, you instructed me to put it right here. What's up with that? Well, wherever you put it, it's fine. However, you need to be able to train with that on a regular basis and, and, and be able to deploy that weapon under a tremendous amount of stress, right? However, I prefer to keep my gun hand dedicated to my gun whether it is drawing or defending. I keep my support hand available for the knife. So you carry the splinter on you. What else is, is that? You have a, a firearm, the splinter, anything else you carry? Always carry a utility knife. And then I have my Fox folder as well. So you carry three blades on you? I do. You're a psychopath. I, I like that. Two, two, two is one, one is none. All right, so uh, at this time, let's go ahead and get rid of live blades and let's get into some action here. I, I wanna learn some fighting stuff. Let's do it. All right, very good. All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm carrying concealed. John is open carrying here. And we're going to go over the three basic strikes that we use to deploy with the knife. And everybody that's fought before is very familiar with the uppercut, the hook, and the overhand. That leaves my free hand for blocking as well as weapon retention. So if I were, to, if John was going to go ahead and try to grab for my gun, 
I'm going to secure this weapon here first. That's my first objective. My other hand, my support hand can now access the blade, which this is a trainer here, and I'm hitting with the basic strikes. If I know how to punch, I know how to stab. The secondary strike is a hook. I wanna avoid the ribs. I'm going into the intercostal muscles and the liver and finish off with an overhand to the base of the neck, keeping my eyes, nose, and mouth turned away to avoid any biohazard. When I'm able to, I'm going to push off and then I'm going to deploy my primary. All right, guys, now we're gonna step it up a little bit and we're gonna fight over this gun. I'm not gonna actually draw because I've been really looking forward to punching John for a while. All right, so question, I kind of went for the gun and I didn't notice you uh, like step back hard and like hip in and try to break that grip at all. Uh, is that by design? Because it's like, I, what, what if I'm able to get that gun out kind of thing? Is that gonna be enough for, for me if you were going for my gun, you know, if, and you even got to it more? Like here, when they pin down, I wanna pull my hips away and be able to, you know, kind of push down and break that grip. Absolutely. You're, you're not doing that. Well, it depends on what type of retention holster you have. With most appendix carry holsters, we don't have that kind of retention. So I risk helping you draw that firearm out when I step back. I want to keep that welded to my body oh. and force down. Got it. Okay. Very good. So what if uh, instead of this, like you held what you got because I got hands on gun. What if I was kind of pining for the gun? Then would you draw back? That's a huge training scar that we should really address with our audience. We allow people to come up and grab our gun and that's where the training starts for time's sake. But that is a huge training scar that we're developing. We should not allow people to put their hands on our guns. Right. So we're trying to create distance before we have to deploy this. This is for somebody that had poor situational awareness and I was able to come up and grab their gun. Got it, okay, very good. But just so I have a context clear, if I was going for your gun but I hadn't gotten hands on, would you go ahead and pull back in a way? Absolutely, I'm gonna to try to create distance whether with strikes or footwork. I'm not going to stand there and allow you to grab Copy, so you're picking up already where you're like, you have failed at multiple points here and now it's hands on gun. That's right, I missed the pre-attack indicators. I, my situational awareness wasn't up to par. You were able to reach in and grab my gun. That's a bad day for me. And now I'm trying to work my way out of that hole. All right, so John, now we're gonna have to switch spots and I want you to try these techniques. Even uh, though you have the trainer, let's do it without having anything in your hands so you don't kill me. Okay, so I'll just draw and then empty hand punch. Simulate. Okay. Controlled punches, John, controlled punches. Sounds good. All right, I'm the bad guy. I'm gonna go for your gun. We're gonna start with a low level of resistance and I'm gonna step it up on you. Uh, when you go, am I two hands and then I go to this to make sure I have positive control? I'm not one and then go for it. Right? Whatever your natural flinch response is gonna be, that's what I want you to stick with. Okay, sounds good. You could always work your way back to that knife with the support. Hand. Okay, sounds okay. good. Draw, pop, pop, pop. Beautiful. Okay, good. Awesome. And then uh, break through the knife, draw, ta, ta, ta. Perfect. With that overhand, I want you to make sure you have a nice and tight angle here so it doesn't catch the shoulder. I want you landing in the base of the neck. Okay. I'll slow down because I don't have your accuracy with these three and, and then overhand, which is a great move. I haven't practiced an overhand. Right. So. Well, I surely appreciate it. And so is my family. Thank you for slowing down. <laughs> right, come on, let's do this All again. All right, here we go. Oh, hold on, whoa, whoa. Now you look cool. Are you intimidated? No, no, I'm not gonna grab Shut your gun. Shut come on, come on. Take away. Oh. So when I did my overhand, I didn't clear your shoulder. My knuckle popped on your shoulder, which meant I failed. Angle. I thought I was angled, but I just came down too early. I needed to be up higher. That's right, and remember, fighting is very dynamic. So your target's moving, you're moving. We really have to focus on keeping that shoulder nice and tight to the ear okay, and yeah. dropping it. I didn't raise it like that. Another thing that does is it protects this quadrant of our face. We don't want to get hit anywhere where the facial hair grows on a male. Oh. If they hit you up here, that's fine. That will break their hand. That's how you end up with plates and screws. Because you protect the beard. Protect the beard at all costs. 
All right, guys, now we're gonna transition to being on the ground. I'm having a real bad day. Bad guy over here, John took me down, ends up in Mount, and he's just raining down blows at me. I'm in fear for my life, or I have a, a great worry of great bodily harm. Now I need to be able to fight him off of me, but I can't access my primary weapon. All right, bad guy's on top of me. He's raining down strikes. I gotta keep my feet close to my body, my head off the ground, my elbows in to keep him from creeping up high and I'm going to keep my head off the ground so I could move a little bit. Even if I don't fend off or parry everything, I have a little bit of movement instead of taking all that force into my skull and into the concrete. So with that being said, he's th throwing strikes at me. Unless John loves to do face plants when I do my buck, he's going to post up. This other hand secures him down to me, secures him down to me. Now I have access by laying this leg on his heel prevents him from tripoding out, and it gives me freer access to this blade to draw, go for the liver, brachial. Oh. Liver and brachial. Once it's softened up enough, I'm gonna reach around, pull that in, center mass. I want his elbow to touch my sternum. Now I'm bridging at a 45 towards the missing table leg, the arm that I have trapped. And then posturing up. When I'm able to, I'll disengage. He's still coming after me. I'll draw. Ah! I wouldn't, I would bleed out. I would not come out. That, so trapping in tight with the blade. Just gives you a little more incentive to bring that arm in. So guys, as you see, my favorite way to defend my firearm is with my blade. However, if I don't have my blade, I, it fell during the fight. I don't have access to one. I'm going to show you guys a technique on how to defend the gun from there. So he reaches in to grab my gun. I'm going to secure it and keep it in my holster not allowing him to pull out. I'm going to step in and cradle the baby with my outside elbow, hyperextending his arm. Once that arm is weakened, this arm is going to reach over, figure four, my other arm, and now I'm gonna make a big circular step with my leg bringing John down, controlling him here. Ow! Jerk. Now I need to get him into handcuffing position. I don't want to start kicking and stomping. Doesn't look good for optics. So what I'm going to do is something called rowing the boat. Oof. Okay. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I have a wrist lock and I have an arm bar and I have very little weight on him. And I'm completely off of his spine and neck. And we should have a lunch break right here. Oh, go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Clean yourself off, man, so we could wrap up and go. No way, man. I like it dirty. Look, I was actually, I was actually gonna do this. Just to show you don't you're not the boss of me. You don't control this. Except when I'm on the ground like a, a dead fish. Oh go! Ah! Alright, so now that I've been humiliated in front of all my friends on my own channel, you're a real jerk. Uh, why the splinter? Why not something else? How did you because I didn't know you? I just found out here's a guy who's super well trained, who loves our knife, and I wanted to know why this and not something else. Number one, because of its size. I'm able to get a good purchase on it. I'm able to hide it behind my magazines on duty, and it's not intimidating, but it's effective. And the grip on it with this little notch and the stippling on the back is going to avoid me over shooting and cutting my hand on it. Gotcha. Also, the blade length is going to keep it legal in other places, and it's not double-edged, it's single-edged. Also, uh, folks will think, and this is nice because I get to teach something, people think, oh, this two and a half inches or so, that's the only penetration. I'm like, no, because the body gives, so you could even double your penetration on a hard hit. So you're doing all kinds of damage. Don't discount the effectiveness of a smaller uh, blade. That's right. Really good, because I would have felt embarrassed if you contradicted me. Amir, thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. It was a pleasure, John. Guys, like he said, don't silo your training of like, today I'm doing gun stuff, or martial arts stuff, or blade stuff. In an ambush, any of that stuff could be introduced at any moment. So we need to be able to be cross-trained in all of it. And so I love the stuff that I was learning today. I'm a student, train, train, train. It's cool to shop and get cool stuff of like, that. that's awesome, that's nice. But really it comes down to training. So make sure you're doing that. You can train with guys like Amir. I'll have his link down below. Specifically, you focus on Leo's law, law enforcement. Law enforcement. So if you're a law enforcement guy, hit them up. Links down below. If you're not able to make in-person training, we'll find a way to make in-person training. But a good stopgap and a way to kind of bring some good skills. 
Check out our app, watchwpsn.com, and we have all kinds of entangled gun and knife fighting stuff. You'll learn a ton and it's far more in depth and we'll have more YouTube videos in the future. So guys, that's it. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff, and make sure you train hard and train smart. Stay free. We planned that up top. That, that arm actually hurt. Do this one. The Shiv Works Extreme Close Quarter Concepts ECQC class is an overview of functional handgun skills at zero to five feet, which we like to say requires an interdisciplinary approach to examining that problem. We're gonna take things that you already know probably good, modern isosceles, pistol shooting, but we're gonna look at that through the lens of a clinch, a ground fight, confined in crowded space. So your shooting is gonna to have to change and adapt quite a bit. We're gonna look at other skills that you may have, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, greco roman wrestling, and mixed martial arts. However, now in a criminal assault context where there are guns, knives, and possibly a second guy coming in, that's gonna to have to change and adapt too. We're gonna to make these adaptations to these orthodoxies that you're already familiar with, combine them synergistically, come up with something cohesive and pressure test our theories with protective equipment, marking cartridges, and full contact. The idea is that no one walks away from the training wondering if something works or not. I'm Craig Douglas, the founder of ShipWorks. This is Extreme Close Quarter Concepts.